everybody, it's your boy Luke here for our round three prize picks targets for the Memorial. Round two wasn't our best stuff. We needed a little bit of a bounce back after one of the rougher cards I've had for quite some time, but we've always been good at bouncing back here. Some of our best performances have been after days like today, so I'm not going to be too discouraged because it's the weekend. We've got some weekend golf ahead of us, prize picks, fantasy side, just a lot to look forward to. And of course, in this video specifically, we we'll talking about my top five props here for Saturday's round. We'll also touch on some of the research I'm putting into my thought process and of course how I expect the course to play here tomorrow. So a lot to talk about. Let's go ahead and get started first off with the research side of the video. All right, we've got data golf on the screen and you can see the scoring average was 1.22 shots over par, which a little bit harder than round one, exactly what we expected. I projected somewhere in that 1.2 to perhaps 1.5 shot over par range, and that's exactly what we got. And that really wasn't a byproduct of the weather. The weather for Friday's round was beautiful. You're talking five to 10 miles an hour of sustained winds and no wind gusts that got above 15 miles an hour. So pretty much pristine stuff. And here for round three, it is much of the same. So if we take a look at the weather, you'll see for, for Saturday, anywhere between five and upwards of eight miles an hour of sustained winds, which eight miles an hour is pretty much nothing to begin with, let alone the three to five miles an hour that is present for most of the day. So if you thought the wind wasn't a factor here on Friday, that is certainly going to be the case here on Saturday. But the reason why it got more difficult from Thursday to Friday, despite the wind conditions actually getting easier, were the greens. These greens are infamous for being among the most firm and fast of any regular PGA Tour event. In fact, they more resemble what we see for a Masters, a US Open, or a PGA Championship than what we see for just an everyday event. I mean, Memorial, you don't get any extra distinction for winning other than an extra year of eligibility on the PGA Tour. It's uh, There might be an extra 100 FedEx Cup points or something like that, um, but you know, most of the time, these regular tour events aren't this difficult. So it's a little bit of a different beast when it comes to this week, um, as opposed to some of these other tour events. But we're going to treat it like a major. It's going to get more and more difficult as the week goes on. And the reliance on accuracy off the tee is going to go up day after day. A lot of that is due to the rough getting longer. And also the reliance on hitting greens goes up because when you miss and greens are getting extremely firm and fast, not only is it harder to save par, it's also harder to just score in general. And to go out there and shoot something like two to three under par, you have to be a lot sharper over the weekend at these major championship type of courses than you do on a Thursday or Friday. So just because somebody is in contention doesn't necessarily mean they're going to continue that over the weekend. And in fact, I'd expect a lot of those leaders, the guys that are out in front of the pack to this point, to start to come back towards the pack. I mean, in terms of winning score, we could see anything from six under par to 10 under par actually win this thing. And at this point, there's quite a few guys at seven and eight under par. Just to give you an idea of how difficult that this will play. So with all that being said, what are the props that I have my eyes on? So we're going to start with birdies or better, where I'm taking Jordan Spieth at four birdies. And Jack Nicholas was on the broadcast today, gave a great recommendation to play Jordan Spieth tomorrow because he said he guaranteed that Jordan Spieth has a big day. And his reasoning was that Jordan Spieth was able to shoot two over par today, yet despite having, quote-unquote, his worst game, D or even F stuff, he'd grade it. Um, at least that's what came out of the Golden Bears' mouth. He's somebody who's volatile to begin with. He made no birdies today, which killed our birdie card, right? We had him on our prize picks card. And I'm willing to go back there because we've seen him bounce back before. He's an extremely streaky player who go out there, work on something, find a feel and a swing on the range, and have that translate to the golf course. And on the range this morning, Colt No said he looked great. So it was surprising that Jordan Spieth didn't make any birdies today. And perhaps there's something to that, right? He's one of these elite tier players. He also said that John Rahm, he thought that he was going to go out there and have a really solid day. And you can see that John Rahm's not on my betting card for tomorrow, but Jordan Spieth is. He's at four birdies. John Rahm's at four and a half. So a lot of that is because of the hook there. But even if Jordan Spieth just gets to four and pushes for us, it's not the end of the world. I have him projected for 4.8 birdies, which is well above the four mark there, giving it enough of a hit rate for us for me to get to it, right? He's not projected for over five. We need to get him to five birdies to actually hit for us. But he's going to hit a lot more often than not. And in terms of a floor, I mean, Jordan Spieth makes a ton of birdies. You have four par fives here, two relatively short par fours to deal with. So six, 
I mean, should be 10 foot or less birdie opportunities there on the course. If he can go out there and putt like he has for the first two rounds, just sharpen up the off the tee play and the approach play a little bit, he could go out there and have a really solid third round. So again, Jack Nicholas, the GOAT, said he was going to go out there and have a solid round. In fact, he actually guaranteed it. Um, so I don't think you have to be that crazy to go out there and play in Jordan Spieth, but at four birdies is somebody that I'm going to have at the top of my card. Next up, we have Shane Lowry at three and a half birdies. So another player that we played yesterday that, I should say today, that didn't really pan out all that well, ended up making three birdies. So it wasn't the end of the world, but all those were through the first eight holes. He made birdies early and then on the back nine, completely fell off the board. And he's at three under par. He's still well in contention at this point, but didn't look all that sharp in his last nine. And, you know, kind of like a Jordan Spieth, has had plenty of time. He'll have plenty of time tomorrow to go out and iron out those mistakes because the fact of the matter is Shane Lowry has been the best player on tour for the last three months on the PGA Tour. And that includes Scotty Scheffler because if you look at pure shots gain metrics, Shane Lowry has him edge. So obviously a little bit more consistent than Scotty Scheffler has been. Scotty Scheffler has just actually gone all those wins. He's had those ceiling performances. And at just three and a half birdies, he's somebody I project for closer to 4.7 birdies. So in terms of a percentage hit rate, he's actually well above even somebody like a Jordan Spieth. But in terms of a raw birdie count, Slightly less projected than a Jordan Spieth. He's uh, a little bit less volatile than Jordan, but from a floor perspective, going out there and being relatively consistent, he does edge Jordan in that category. So they're both 1A, 1B when it would come to my props. And a lot of times people have me go ahead and rank them. So I would still take Jordan Spieth over Shane Lowry, but both of them are among my most confident props of the day. Next up, we have Patrick Reed. So there's a little bit of a step down when it comes to confidence, but the fact that he's down here at just three birdies is really what makes him attractive because he's the lowest guy on the board. He's got a hot enough putter to get to that mark. He's got the four par fives, the two easy par fours to take advantage of, and today made four birdies on his front nine. So clearly has shown the ability to go out there and make birdies in bunches. He gets the flat stick rolling when he gets hot from time to time. In the last two weeks, he's been great on approach. Gained over five strokes on approach the last two weeks. The first round was pretty decent with his iron play. Round two today, maybe not the best, but had it everywhere else. He was much more accurate off the tee. The putter has been there through the first two rounds. And if he can continue the ball striking that we've seen for the last few events, you know, kind of rekindle that here over the weekend, also putt like he has been, which, you know, he's always going to be one of the best short game players in the world. He could go out there and make six or seven birdies, let alone the three we need to push or the four we need to hit. So I have him projected for 4.1 birdies, which is a whole 1.1 higher than his projection there, making it one of my favorite overs on the board. Now that we've gone through our overs, let's go ahead and talk about the fades, which both of them are going to be on the stroke side of things, because with these firm, fast greens, any miss is going to be penalized. So even if somebody like Answer or Adam Scott goes out there and makes three or four birdies tomorrow, they could very well miss on strokes. I mean, let alone if they go out there, don't make many birdies to begin with. They just make one or two bogeys on the day. So let's go ahead and start with Abraham Answer. We're taking the over at 71 strokes. This is a par 72 setup. So this is assuming he shoots minus one or worse. He's at minus three currently. Uh, played well at the PGA Championship. Really turned around his season because before that, Answer was playing horribly. He was missing cuts. He was finishing 30th or 40th at best. And for somebody like Answer, who is a perennial top 30 player in the world, that is well below what we'd expect for him. So somebody at his price tag, I'd project closer to 72 strokes. I mean, tomorrow, the scoring average is going to be closer to 73 or even 73 and a half. So it's not like I'm projecting him to be a below average player. It's just not an elite level player. And to get to 70 or better, two under or better, you're going to have to be that elite level type of player. So for me, not somebody I'm confident in taking the under on. In fact, because of his issues around the green, he's not that long off the tee. He's not the most accurate player off the tee either somebody that i'm also looking to fade so like i said projected for over 72 strokes even if he shoots one under which would be a solid round for tomorrow not going to kill us right that'd be a push and to get to minus two or better i mean that's starting to get towards a really solid round in these conditions so somebody that i will be fading and lastly we have adam scott adam scott has new irons in the bag completely remade this week he put them in the bag on thursday and was horrible on approach on Thursday. Today, continued that. The only reason he shot plus four today and minus two on the first day was the uh, putter. The putter on Thursday was beautiful. He made pretty much everything. In fact, through 13 holes, he had 13 putts. They were all one putts for him. 
today could not have been more different. The putter escaped him. The irons weren't there. Obviously, the new irons aren't working too well for him. And even the off the tee play hasn't been there in terms of accuracy. So somebody I have confidently projected for over 71 strokes. In fact, closer to 72.6 strokes. So almost a whole 1.6 higher than his number there. So if I'm going to go ahead and grade the plays. The guys I'm taking the over on right for birdies are always going to be my most confident plays, but my favorite of the two fades would be Adam Scott. Just because of the fact that he has the new irons in the bag, he's a volatile player to begin with, and hasn't had the ball striking through the first two rounds, it is a clear indicator of regression coming forward. So those will be the fades. Of course, because we have the three overs, the two unders, that gives us a 12.5x payout. That's the whole reason we take the two fades. We go with the three guys that we're supporting because of the correlations in golf. So taking advantage, once again, of that extra payout there. And this is the card I'll be going with here for Saturday. All right, guys, that's all I've got here for the round three picks. Before you hop on out of here, go ahead and throw your favorite pick on the board down in the comments. I always love to hear from you guys. Go ahead and let me know what you're targeting here for the third round. But as per usual, really appreciate you guys stopping by, enjoying the content. If you haven't already smashed the like button, make sure you go ahead and do that. And if you haven't already hit that subscribe button, first off, what are you waiting for? But make sure you do so so you don't miss any of my content in the future. That'll include a round four prize picks video dropping sometime tomorrow night, all of my course breakdowns, DFS content, and of course, anything for the rest of the PGA Tour schedule. So a lot to drop here, a lot to look forward to. Really looking forward to the weekend at the Memorial, one of my favorite golf courses. I'm expecting to see some carnage here on Saturday and Sunday. Best of luck with all of your lineups, all of your slips here for Saturday, and let's get this cash.